The winter storm that's brought tornadoes as well as damaging winter weather impacts to parts of the east coast is finally exiting the United States, but now we've got a big pattern change that's going to allow for the El Nino jet stream pattern to really take hold, the one that we're expected to see throughout the winter. Active south, very warm in the north. I've got the details on that in this video. All right, your forecast begins at the one minute and five second mark, but let's go ahead and take a look at that preliminary damage survey result um, that we got uh, over parts of Clarksville, Tennessee. Of course, we had an EF3 tornado on the higher end of the spectrum there with 150 mile per hour peak winds. This happened um, from 1.41 p.m. to 2.42 p.m. Central Time on our Saturday here, and we saw about a 43 mile long path length there. And of course, that area was just one of the areas that saw tornadoes. We saw one near Hendersonville, Tennessee, preliminary rating on that in EF2. We also saw, of course, the this entire front here that really began producing impacts in parts of western Kentucky all the way back down to parts of eastern Texas. We saw that also produce some tornadoes in, a, in the southern end of that line of storms through the nighttime Saturday night and into our Sunday over parts of the Gulf Coast states, especially Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida. And then as we made our way into our Sunday, we saw some of those impacts head on over into parts of North Carolina and South Carolina as well. Thankfully, everything tornadic, wintry, you know, rainy about that storm system, flooding concerns that we saw there in New England, that's gone. We've got high pressure now taking hold. And what's interesting about the high pressure system, it creates a clockwise flow. And how clockwise flow works, of course, we're going to see that pull in that clockwise direction. And what's going to happen here, you're going to notice is that the cold front there that we have that's made its way well off the East Coast by our Tuesday here in the morning, we're actually going to see some of that energy head back on towards the plains in that clockwise direction. And we actually get a southerly flow over the plains, bringing warmer than average air, as well as the chance for some precipitation here, including maybe even some higher elevation snowfall there, um, especially into New Mexico and Colorado. So this is going to be the beginning of kind of an El Nino like pattern here with high pressure further north, active um, conditions in the south, although you wouldn't necessarily expect conditions to develop off of a cold front like this. You can see parts of Florida and then curling back on around and into the plains, really seeing the worst impacts of this through our Thursday and into our Friday, and I call it worst impacts, mainly just heavy, maybe flooding rain would be the concerns with that. This does make its way through the entire state of Texas. I know it's been very dry there. There's been lots of cases where with these recent storm systems, Texas has been missed. Not this time. We'll get some beneficial rain there, but um, some very heavy rainfall moving into other parts of the southeast as well, potentially. We'll break that down in just a second. But here's, again, the high-pressure ridging that's going to be kind of helping to develop that pattern. Of course, we've got kind of cooler high-pressure, near-average temperatures over parts of the eastern United States settling on in behind that cold front. But where we've been, you know, had, had some time to recover from that cold front and really it never really moved through in a, as strong a fashion as it did through the east coast over the north central anyway. Um, we, we're going to see warmer than average air build back there 10, 15, 20 degrees above average throughout the rest of this week, pretty much Wednesday onward through Thursday and into our Friday here. The entire northern part of the country by our Friday is anywhere from around 5 to 15 degrees above where we should be for this time of the year. And just like we should be seeing with El Nino, a little bit below average and of course wetter than average across the southern corridor. So really beginning to see what we should be seeing throughout the winter a lot of the time shape up now. By the way, if you've, if you've enjoyed my forecasting so far and if you're new to the channel, go ahead and think about hitting that subscribe button for me and liking this video. But anyway, back into the content here. Dew points, that low level moisture. Let me show you again and kind of give you a little bit more of an in-depth breakdown of how that cold front and that clockwise flow brings that energy back on over towards parts of Texas. Again, we've got that high pressure system here. You can see those blues and those purples indicating that deep, that rich Atlantic moisture sitting over parts of, you know, several hundred miles offshore of the East Coast, at least temporarily. But look at how that kind of drags back out and as opposed to be tilted from north to south, it tilts west to east as that energy heads back on off in a weird direction towards the west. It's pretty abnormal to see a storm system move from east to west, and this isn't moving in that direction. This is just the moisture that's going to fuel the next one, of course, here in the parts of Texas and the Arklatex. I um, mean, you can see some dew points in the 50s and 60s. That's ripe enough for some you know, some showers and thunderstorms over that region, but of course all the way up into parts of Kansas and Missouri, I think we'll at least get some brief scattered showers from this as well. And then also notice how this begins to head on off towards the east, potentially getting a little bit of a system here that could ride its way on up the east coast. Once again, something very typical of an El Nino, um, you know, late fall and into the winter here, and something that we'll need to be watching all the way through next spring for a similar type of pattern. So again, you see that H driving this whole thing, that high pressure ridge over the northeastern part of the screen there. We've got rain and storms getting getting going into parts of Texas, Kansas, with some snowfall in northern New Mexico here on our Thursday. A little bit showery in South Florida and quite rainy over the Gulf of Mexico as well. As we make our way towards our Thursday afternoon, maybe in the panhandle of Texas, the panhandle of Oklahoma, a brief shot of some heavy snow. Not much in the way of accumulation out of that as it looks right now, but things can change. 
we continue to see that wet east to west flow of that precipitation through the southern corridor of Florida there. But overall, again, this new storm system that develops is actually just going to be feeding off of that moisture while moving in the normal direction. We see storm systems move across the United States west to east. The only place it's really normal to see that east to west flow is in Florida. And of course, that is overall what we're seeing. It's just helping to, as I've been saying, pump that moisture on up into that other one over here over Oklahoma, Texas, into our Friday night and into our Saturday. And then as we make our way, you know, late Saturday here, making our way, into the you know you know the middle of the day into the evening hours here eventually we, it looks like we might try to see some sort of low pressure system a little bit of a combo of these two systems try to merge and form a low here over the northeastern gulf of course non-tropical it looks like but nonetheless that could make its way off towards the northeast that's that pole of moisture that could develop some sort of nor'easter system but of course the impacts out of that to be determined now what i will show you here is the total system precipitation anticipated with the gfs model look at the totals we could see here in the parts of texas and oklahoma that would definitely be enough to spit out some flooding anywhere from around one to three inches of rain in many communities but some of those yellow splotches you see that could be in parts of the panhandle of texas through parts of dallas as well as on down into southern louisiana some spots maybe there closer to three to five inches of rain and then notice that secondary wave of energy that will pulse off of that you know that you know that little bit of energy that's going to be sitting down there over florida that could bring um two to four inches of rain as well to parts of the southeast florida could see near nearly half a foot with some dangerous flooding potential there especially in the southern part of the state. You see a similar deal with the European model, um, but it doesn't look like um, the southeast would be impacted quite as much. A little bit tamer on the overall precipitation here for areas inland in the parts of Texas and Oklahoma as well. So that's overall what we're seeing here, the difference between the GFS and the Euro. Most impacts only occur in Texas and Oklahoma with the Euro, and they're weaker at that as that high pressure ridge is just even a little bit more you, you know, prominent and kind of keeps that precipitation out of the southeast in that case. But here's what we're looking like pattern wise for this Thursday, um, December 14th into our Friday, December 15th. High pressure over the north central, that's where that warmer ridge here that we're going to be seeing bring the, bringing those temperatures quite a bit above average there. We're going to have that driving, you know, high pressure system that's really driving the whole pattern here over parts of the southeast and, and during that same time frame. And that's what's going to crank that moisture from east to west and then eventually feed that southerly flow over the plains as well as that, uh, you know, eventual system that we might have to watch this upcoming weekend that could impact parts of the south southeast and the east coast. So we'll have to monitor the forecast closely, but overall we're definitely entering a little bit more of a quiet pattern in comparison to that big winter storm we just saw. And of course, um, you know, prayers continue to go out for the families and everyone impacted there. And by the way, this is my channel. I've been, been really proud of the recent growth with, you know, a couple thousand views on pretty much every video recently. Thank you so much for the support. Um, you never thought I would gain subscribers and viewers this quickly. Thank you to everyone who's tuned in recently and for all the, you know, the great graciousness in the comments, um, everybody. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great day, everyone.